Well, hello ladies and gents, and welcome to this tutorial on applying a compressor within BandLab Cakewalk. Applying a compressor comes, uh, something you should be applying throughout your production on more or less every track. It's a very subtle process that basically brings your gain under control and helps to minimize the impact of very spiky tracks and helps things cut through in the mix. You start applying it quite early in the process. I like to look at it uh, along with EQs and gates before I start applying things like reverbs and delays and that sort of thing. But of course, you know, you use your judgment when you want to start applying a compressor. So I've been working away on this recording by my students and so far I've done a bit of work on the kick drum, snare drum and hi-hat. I've just introduced the bass guitar. Been working, I've been adding some EQs, I've been actually adding a little bit of drive to some of these parts like the snare drum to get it to, to cut through. It was quite weak. So I've been using the tube drive and trying out this plug I've never seen before called Boost. So, you know, after having normalized everything, I'm now pushing the levels up. I'm using my 10 decibels of headroom quite effectively. So this is what I've got at the moment. So this is just a, a loop with, um, say, kick, snare, hi-hat and bass guitar. It's all fairly steady away, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to be adding a compressor to each of these tracks, but I've done nothing with the bass, so I'm going to actually go down to the bass guitar part and apply a compressor to this track to show you how it all works. Uh, bass guitar always benefits from a compressor. I don't know if any of you are bass guitarists out there, but when you've been playing out in gigs and, and some venues, one note sounds louder than another, another venue here, other tones better. A compression brings all that under control. Bass rings are wild, you know, they're so low and travel so far, uh, they really need to be brought under control with a bit of compression so that it all sounds even or solid in the mix. So there's various ways to compress in Cakewalk. There is actually compressors built in and it's, it's quite a decent plug-in. So this is the inspector, by the way, you get all sorts of things and these are automatically available for you. The only trouble with this compressor, it doesn't use conventional parameters, so I've, uh, actually filming this and never ever used this before but let's give it a go. I'm going to go with the compressor gate which you find in the plugins folder over here on the right hand side and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it over and put it underneath this equalizer. Right I'm about to make a fatal mistake and I mentioned this in the previous tutorial. The thing about Cakewalk it's really hard sometimes to select a track you don't realize you haven't done it I've been down here and I've selected bass guitar but look down here the inspector still says snare be very careful you've actually got to click on the um on the words bass guitar and there we are right I thought I hadn't done EQing yet on the bass e right okay I'm just going to um, bring it in there uh, early on in the train and there's the compressor right it's quite a a small looking component. Right, yeah, that's more, more like it in terms of what I ex would expect to see on a compressor. So what a compressor does is that, um, well, it does exactly what it says on the tin. It nudges down, it pushes down, compresses just the peaks in any given signal flow, any waveform. And the more compression you apply, the more it's pushing down. But basically it leaves the quieter nuances the quieter waveforms untouched. They're, the, they're left exactly the same. But it nudges down the peaks so they're closer to the next loudest bit and so on and so forth. So what you hear, it sounds to you like you're lowering the level, but actually all you're doing is lowering the level of the loudest bits. Everything else is at the same level. So if you then to increase the level afterwards to um, kind of replace what it sounds like you've lost, you end up with a much stronger, fatter signal. This is why compression is, compression is so good for making your recording sounding professional and complete, ready for the radio and all that business. It's not a particularly gratifying process. It's not like when you hire delay or reverb on and you go, wow, that sounds amazing. Compression is subtle. Unless it's overdone, you only have to watch an episode of Glee to hear what overdone compression sounds like. Uh, but I mean, that's quite fun, don't get me wrong, but uh, there's absolutely no soul uh, in anything that's performed there. It's all been compressed within an inch of its life and everything is the same level throughout. So that's the dangers of over compressing stuff. Well, let's have a go at compressing this bass. So to make this compressor work, I'm going to be using the threshold to set the point where compression starts. I'm going to be using ratio 
to say how much I want to compress by. So this is very, very small, this is a bit of a shame. I'll, I'll zoom in obviously on the video, um, but at the moment it's saying minus 7.5 decibels it's going to start compressing. It's quite high in the, in the chain, so it's not going to do an awful lot. Um, take it down a little bit, and 1 over 1 is, is no compression at all. You start putting up 4 over 1, 5 over 1 and so forth. Basically the higher you turn this dial up, the stronger your compression gets. Let's see if this has made any kind of difference. I can switch it on and off over here so we can hear the difference. But uh, here we go, here's the bass part. Let's solo it. So without the compression, more spiky, it's more feisty, slightly louder with the compression. Let's uh, make it stronger. So it sounds like now it's really going down in level, it's gone quite quiet. So it's much more steady away, but a lot quieter now. So basically what I've set there is saying that at just about 30 decibels below zero, when the bass reaches that level, the compressor is going to start at a ratio of 8 to 1. Shame there's no actual meter on here showing what it looks like, because that would be really helpful. A lot of compressors have that on it, this one doesn't. Um, we need to also look at the attack and the release here, um, because the attack is going to determine how quickly the compressor starts, and it's on a very fast attack at the moment, which means it's going to compress the point where the um, bass players plucking the strings and you may want to bring that through a bit more to get a bit more kind of percussive sound so in which case increase the attack by a few milliseconds so you take it all the way down to zero because it's very like very flat Now a meter would be handy at the moment because a meter will show you how much you've lost in terms of conceived level. But I'm just going to use my ear and replace what I think I've lost. The release, sorry I should have mentioned that before as well. Release is how quickly that the compressor switches off again after you've fallen below the threshold level again. Um, now with the release you really want it as quick as possible so it can recover to compress the next sound. So if you've got a long release you know, it starts to compress the next plucking of the string. So the trouble is though sometimes with a fast release you get this kind of popping throbbing sound where it releases and cuts in again. So if you start if it starts causing a problem um, actually sometimes that's quite desirable, it sounds quite nice, but if it starts causing a problem just increase the release again, but otherwise keep the release fairly quick so that the compressor can recover and compress again. So with compressor, without. With compressor. So what's happened, I've lost level and replaced it but the overall sound of this bass guitar is now a lot stronger. Let's put it back now with the kick and the snare. Quite a nice bass sound actually. I'm not sure I would actually do much in the way of EQ on it. It's very um very authentic. I 
okay to keep pushing through on it. Might attempt to use some side chain compression at some point, but that's a tutorial for the future. Anyway, so it's actually you compress. Do apply it to vocals, bass guitars. I would look at applying it slightly to all your drums. Just about everything. Some synthesizers, some guitar parts might get away with no compression, but even then, bring them under control, and you'll generally find the recording is sounding a lot more professional, a lot more sweet. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope that was useful.